Here he got pushed, something people don't end up this way. These panels were upstairs between the kitchen and the uh, landing. And this gun was hanging on the wall. And when he hit the wall, it jarred it loose. Side by side, Renee and her husband snap photos of the deceased. She for the medical examiner, he for the East Point police. Once they fully assess the scene, Renee has the body moved to the kitchen floor so she can do a proper physical exam. When she's done, a company contracted by the county will transport Mr. Krieger's body to the morgue, where Dr. Spitz will perform an autopsy first thing tomorrow morning. Based on Mr. Krieger's history of alcoholism, it could appear he's the victim of a drunken accident. He's obviously been down a while. But Renee is careful not to jump to any conclusions. In fact, no alcohol has been found at the scene. Now it will be up to the police, Renee, and medical examiner Dr. Daniel Spitz to determine whether the death of Charles Krieger Jr. is the result of an unfortunate accident or a criminal incident. Coming up, Eric Toyota. In Macomb County, Michigan, a father has discovered his 52-year-old son dead. It appears the man has fallen down a set of stairs. His head has broken through a wall. East Point police are first to arrive. They call the medical examiner's office, which dispatches one of its six investigators, Rene Digo. By sheer coincidence, the officer on the scene today is her husband, Randy Digo. Usually what happens when she's on call and when I'm working, our parting joke as I leave the house at 3 o'clock is she'll tell me, don't find any dead bodies, and I'll tell her, well, don't get called to any in my city. It's too early to tell whether Charles Krieger Jr. has died a natural death or been the victim of foul play. Husband and wife both work the case the way their jobs require. Renee performs a physical exam on the body, while one of her husband's colleagues, Sergeant Darrell Corsi, questions potential witnesses. Come by all hours of the night, mostly guy friends. As Renee wraps up the physical exam, she briefs her boss, Macomb County Medical Examiner, Dr. Daniel Spitz, on the case. Okay, so you're gonna do them tomorrow morning then? All right, bye-bye. If it turns out that the case is a suspicious case, then we combine all the tools that we have from our perspective and from the police perspective to work together to get to the final uh, answer. As Renee continues noting details, one in particular jumps out at her. The man's father has described him as an alcoholic, and virtually no alcohol is found on the scene. You good to go, Renee? <clears throat> yes, good to go. You know, was he intoxicated to the point of, uh, of collapsing down these steps and into the, into the uh, plaster? So, you know, while the scene tells me a lot, it's going to be the autopsy that answers the questions as to what ultimately happened. Before the autopsy can begin, Christina takes photographs of the body from several angles. If this turns out to be a crime, it could end up in court. Every step of every autopsy at this medical examiner's office is documented in detail. You can start. You guys can start. We were called in to do trace evidence collection on a body that was found in a, in a home. And because Mr. Krieger was found naked with rectal bleeding,